In this episode, I want to talk about the date of case. Kamu chemu. So let's first look at the endings. These are really nice and pretty easy. So most masculine nouns and all neuter nouns in the singular are going to take u or u. And masculine nouns that end in a or ya, like that have a feminine ending. And then feminine nouns take ya or e. And everybody, regardless of their gender, is am, yam, am, yam. So ami, yami. All you have to do is pay attention to the spelling rules. And if it has a soft ending in the nominative case, it's going to take ya, right, or you. And if it has a hard ending in the nominative case, it's going to take ya, u, or am. So pretty straightforward. Similarly with the adjectives and the pronouns. And again, just pay attention to your spelling rules, right? So use soft letters after sh. OK, so when do we use the dative case? There are quite a few different times. In general, whenever you would say to whom or for whom in English, um, you're going to use the dative case. So let's look at a sentence in English and just kind of get our grammar figured out or parts of speech. So we've got grandma reads a story to the children. So in this sentence, grandma is the subject. Right? She's the person doing something. And what is she doing? She's reading. So that's our verb or predicate. And our direct object is what she's reading. So she's reading a story. So that's our direct object. And here comes our dative case to the children. So the children are, are the recipients of this action of reading, right? So they're the people for whom this action is performed. So we use the date of case for recipients or beneficiaries of some action. Right? So if we look at that same sentence in Russian, our parts of speech are going to be the same. But instead of using word order, we're going to use case endings. So we've still got our grandma as the subject, right, babushka. Babushka читает книгу детям. Babushka is in the nominative case. So we know she's still the subject. And the verb читать agrees with her, читает. And then here's our direct object in the accusative case. Knigu. And our date of case, the beneficiaries, the dietum, the kids. So most human speech, whether it's written or spoken or communication, is intended for a beneficiary, right? Like someone's listening or reading or receiving that um, information. And that person who's the recipient of the information or the communication is going to be in the dative case. So you'll often use the dative case with these verbs, these communication verbs. So pisat kamu, right? Write to someone. Gavarit kamu, skazat kamu. So it's always to someone. So for example, even though you're probably pretty familiar with these three verbs. Mama gavarit sinu. So the beneficiary of that talk is the son, so he's in the date of case. Or dochka pishet atsu pismo. Kamu ana pishet pismo? Ana pishet atsu pismo. So some more verbs that you're going to use the dative case with. Again, we have beneficiaries and recipients. So these are verbs of assistance or service. And so the person 
receiving that assistance or service is in the date of case. So to help, to advise, and to serve. So I can write those. To help, to advise, and to serve. So you can look at some examples. Sin pomagayet mamia. So the son is helping the mother. She's the recipient of the help, and so she's in the date of case. Or vrach mnie sovietoval nadikhod. So the doctor advised me, advised to me, to rest. Right? So also after verbs that instead of providing service are kind of negative, right? So annoyance or harm or getting in the way. So these are all followed by the date of case. So again, the beneficiary, if you can call them that, or the recipient of this annoyance or harm or betrayal is in the date of case, that beneficiary or the recipient. So let's just look at one example. So, Malchik Mishayet Sistre i Bratu Zanimatsa. So, the little boy is getting in the way of his brothers and sisters studying, right? So, the sister and the brother are both beneficiaries or recipients of this getting in the way, um, and so they're in the date of case. We also use the dative case after verbs that permit or forbid something. So, pazvalyat, razrashat, those both mean to allow or to permit to do something. And the person who's allowed or permitted to do something is in the dative case. Or zaprashat is to forbid someone. So, the person allowed or forbidden to act or do whatever is in the dative. So again, the recipient or the beneficiary of the action. So we could just look at one example. So atiets zaprashayet sinu kurit. So the father forbids his son to smoke. So the the person receiving that is the son, and he's in the date of case. All right, and then after these verbs for to teach or to learn, so the noun that denotes the subject that's being taught or learnt is in the date of case. So, uchi to teach. So we've got. Atiets uchit dochere. So the father teaches his daughters. So they're in the accusative case, and the subject is going to be in the dative case. So rus kamu yaziko. So atiets uchit dochere rus kamu yaziko. So dative case is the subject that's being taught. Or if we want to say to study, so this is meaning teach, right? Or if we want to say to study, studenti uchitsa ruskoi literatoroi. So again, the subject that's being studied is in the date of case. Okay, so those are the verbs that require the date of case. And now we'll look at nouns. And these make a lot of sense because they're just the nouns sort of most commonly used with the verbs, right? So if you're going to have a letter, pismo, you probably wrote it. And so pismo kamo 
who is the letter to to our padarak kamu or pamosh kamu saviet kamu so they make sense so pismo drugu padarak kamu padarak dietim right children love presents pamosh starikam to the elderly saviet kamu minya so all the recipients of these nouns are in the dative case. There are also some adjectives that use or require the dative case. And these adjectives can be in their long or short form. So this is the long form in this one, and this is the short. So blagadarni or blagadarn is to be grateful to. So it's an adjective grateful to. To whom or to what are you grateful? So in that that person or thing that you're grateful to is in the dative case. So yeah, blagadaran Arajitalyam. Right, so if I were a boy and I said this, so I am grateful to my parents. Or Virni, Virin is to be true or faithful to and so the person to whom you're faithful or the thing to which you're faithful is going to be in the dative case. And so you've probably noticed that whenever we see two or oftentimes when we see two uh, in English, it's going to be in the dative case. So on Viren Svaim Principum Right, so he's faithful to his principles. So the adjective and the noun are in the dative case. Or rad, rada, to be glad. So miochen radi prichodu gastie. We're glad for the arrival, right, of the guests. And there are other adjectives that require the dative case, but these are ones that you've probably already come across or that are useful. Okay, so this you've definitely come across in your textbook. And the, the use of the dative case in impersonal constructions to point out the person experiencing a certain state or condition. So the person experiencing the state or condition is in the dative case, right? So let's say we've got this very hot day and the sun is just pounding on this poor girl and she's overheating. To her, Dievochkia Jarka. So to the girl, it's hot. Or on the other hand, this freezing scenario. So Ivano Holodna. So to Ivan, it's cold. He's out there just in his little shorts. And so he's in the snow, so he's freezing. So Yamu Vesela, right? He's cheerful. It's to him, this is like a fun situation, right? Or to the student, on the other hand, Studiantu Skuchna. So it's boring to the student. Or let's say we've got this poor guy with a wheelbarrow full of bricks or rock and he's climbing uphill. So Yemu Trudna. It's difficult. But over here we've got this girl going downhill with just one little rock. So Aye Lechko. So, and there's lots more times you can use these, but you've already come across them in your book. And it's just a reminder. So, we also use the dative case with impersonal verbs ending in sia. So, with this one, Sasha Hochit Yist means Sasha wants to eat, right? 
But if we use Hochitsa instead of Hochin, now it's this impersonal verb and it means to Sasha, right? So it, the, the meaning changes somewhat and now it means that Sasha feels like eating, right? Or somebody feels like sleeping or, right, it's a little softer. Also, Kajitsa, this is very common. So the person to whom something seems, whatever, is put into the dative case. So, Matari Kajitsa shto sin bolen. So to the mother, it seems like her son is sick. All right, and then we use the dative case in these three little miscellaneous instances. So monuments are always, in the dative case, the person that's being honored with the monument. So, pamitnik Pietro Pirvamu. So, this is a, mon a monument to Peter the Great or Peter the First. Letters are addressed to someone, right? So, when you're writing out the address on a letter, you're going to put that person into the dative case. And then age. So, this is a big one. Whenever you're talking about age, you're basically saying to someone is some amount of years. So instead of saying, I am so many years, you say sort of, you know, to me are this many years. So we could, you would ask someone, right? Skolka let Ivano. Right, so how many years to Ivan? Ivanu, that's it, yet. The person whose age you're talking about is in the dative. And if you are talking about a past age, you're going to use below. So, for example, so past. Mayamu Mayamu Brato Bolo Tagda Pet Let Okay, so we also use the date of case after certain prepositions. And the two most common prepositions are ka and po. There are a couple other prepositions, but you haven't come across them, and it's not really worth, you know, adding more extraneous information. So these are the most common, and they're definitely good to know. So k means to someone, or to or towards, or sort of up to a spatial point, so up to some sort of geographic place or a, some sort of point. And this is po means motion along a surface. And then there are some figurative meanings too, or figurative uses. So let's look at ka first. So we know when we're talking verbs of motion and we and we're going towards a person that we use ka plus the dative case, right? So Bolnoi Prisho Ka Vrachu Right? So ka the, to the doctor. Or ya pashla drugu, right? So ka, and then the person, or I go if I went to my female friends ka padru ya, and then we can also use ka meaning towards a spatial point, right? So ka bergu towards the shore. Gorado, towards town or up to the town, like the car drove up to the town, or k 
Karanitsa. If you're approaching a border, up driving up to a border or up, approaching even a figurative border or separation. Okay, so then po. So this was k and it's kuda. Right? And then we've got po. And this is movement along a surface. You could eat the po lesu. Eat the po polio. Po ulitsia. Po darogia. Right, these are all familiar. So this is just movement along a surface. Or you could say, let's say we've got a wavy sea and a guy out on a boat with his oars. Lodka papliot pavolnam. So the boat is sailing or riding along the waves. So, and then, like I said before, you can also use po in a more figurative way. And these are some common phrases that you've probably already come across. Pa telefono, pa televidienio, or pa televizoru, pa raspisanio. So this is according to schedule. Or if you're talking about a lecture, um, you can indicate which subject it is lectia po chemii, so a chemistry lecture. So these are some more figurative uses of po in the dative case. So yeah, the dative case is pretty useful. And when you think of the word to in English, do you consider using the dative case? Because the recipient of lots of actions and most human communication is in the dative case.